how can a digital camera help you get better results when you shoot film? Well, digital cameras are very helpful in many ways, really. Today, I'm going to use one to test some lenses that were created for the regular 16 format. I recently posted a video I shot with my friend Brad and his Cessna plane. I wanted to introduce my Sony FS5 Mark II, which I used to shoot that video. This camera is the one I use most of the time to do my work. Some people would consider the camera a dinosaur, but I'm not worried about having the newest camera and I'm not going to talk about the camera itself. I'm going to use it on this video because the camera has a Super 16 mode. Natively, the camera has a Super 35 sensor, but it has a center scan option that digitally crops the sensor to Super 16. Why do I think this is a great tool? Well, there are tons of reasons. Mounting a lens on a digital camera allows me to see how the image looks in general. I can connect the camera directly to a monitor or television and see if the lens covers the Super 16 area, if it's soft or sharp, if it has chromatic aberration issues, if there are dust particles inside the lens affecting the image, distortion or a color cast, just to mention a few. The 16mm format was introduced 100 years ago in 1923. It has an aspect ratio of 1.37 to 1. Manufacturers designed the lenses to cover that area. There was no need to cover a bigger area. Why? Well, in 1966, Super 16 was invented. Super 16 has an aspect ratio of 1.66 to 1. That means lenses designed for regular 16 don't cover the Super 16 area, right? Well, some lenses do and some don't. Some manufacturers created lenses that project a bigger image circle behind the lens. Telephoto lenses produce a larger image circle, but wide-angle lenses are the opposite. My Bolex Rex 4 is being converted to Super 16 at the moment. Are the lenses that I have going to cover the Super 16 area? I don't know. Let's find out. As you can see, this 10mm lens that I have here almost covers the 16x9 area of high-definition television, but it vignettes. The red line is the Super 16 area, and as you can see, the lens covers almost completely the Super 16 gate. The yellow area is a regular 16 format that the lens was designed to cover. It doesn't present any issues within that area. Finally, the green frame represents the 2.40 to 1 aspect ratio commonly used on big budget movies. You may notice that the image degrades as it extends out of the area that the lens was designed to cover. Technically, it almost covers Super 16 but it presents some issues. Take a look at this 15mm lens. The image circle covers the Super 16 area. There is no vignette in this case. But if you pay attention, the quality of the image changes as soon as it goes beyond the area the lens was designed to cover. The sides of the image get blurry in an unnatural way. This effect disappears when I close the iris down to f5.6. Let's take a look at this telephoto lens. This Hugo Mayer & Company lens has a focal length of 3 inches, which is equivalent to 76 millimeters. I mentioned before that telephoto lenses create a larger image circle. As you can see, the lens has no problem filling the Super 16 area. When I took these shots, the lens had fungus. Here is the same lens with the fungus partially cleaned. I say partially because the fungus permanently damaged the coatings of the lens, leaving marks on it. It's cleaner, but the lens will never be the same as new. This lens is particularly prone to lens flare. Now let's take a look at this Kern Payar Bizarre AR 26mm f1.9. The lens was designed to be used with non-reflex Bolex cameras. 
I think there is an improvement on the quality of the image compared to the previous lenses we saw. I have two lenses that were designed specifically for Polix cameras that have the reflex system. These lenses are marked as RX. They were optimized to work with my Rex 4. Naturally, these two lenses are the ones I want the most to cover the Super 16 area, so I can use them with my converted camera. Now, RX lenses were designed to interact with the prism inside the Bolex. Will they perform well with a sensor? The Suitar 60mm lens looks great. As you can see, the lens has no issues covering the Super 16 area, and the quality of the image is not bad. But if you pay attention to the sides of the screen, the image has an unnatural and sudden change on depth of field. If we look at exactly the same image with the regular 16 mask, we can see that area is free of issues. If I close the iris down, the image corrects itself gradually. A 16mm lens on Super 16 is considered normal, so I'm glad to have a normal lens that covers Super 16. Let's see how this big Zoom Varius Vitar 18-86mm f2.5, which also has the RX nomenclature, performs. So far, this lens is the one that in my opinion has performed the best. The lens produces a good looking image edge to edge even in the widest position and with the aperture open all the way. I was hesitant about mounting the lens on my Sony camera. This massive lens weighs 2 pounds 4 ounces. Can you believe this lens has a C-mount and was designed for the Polix? This is why you need the Aries Do All rod support accessory for your camera. Probably you have heard that some zoom lenses cover the Super 16 area beyond certain point. A very common example is the Mirior 5 to 1 lens that comes with most K3s. The lens covers the Super 16 area beyond the 27mm mark. A common situation with Angenou and Airy lenses from the time. As you can see, being able to mount lenses on a digital camera allows you to see the image on real time, magnify it, record it, and analyze it. Can you do this with a film camera? Well, you can see some things, but how are you going to know if a lens covers the Super 16 area if you only have a regular 16 camera, or if you have a converted K3 that doesn't let you see a portion of the focusing screen? In conclusion, I would say this is a great way to see what your lenses can do. Magnifying the image allows you to see that wide-angle lens can actually be focused even when you don't see a difference through the viewfinder of your K3. I can say all the lenses have the same issues that all lenses have. They are not exactly sharp, they have chromatic aberration issues, they are soft, especially wide open, and are prone to lens flare. Using a matte box actually helps to improve the contrast. Do I want to use the lenses to actually film something using a digital camera? Not really. I would use them if I were trying to get an old look or if I want to create a disorienting effect, but I wouldn't use them for normal work. They are very small and not exactly user-friendly. Another benefit of being able to mount lenses on the FS5 Mark II using the Super 16 mode is I can use the camera as a director's viewfinder. I can mount the actual lens I'm planning to use to film something and see if I can shoot inside a car inside a room, or if I can get a close-up of that boat or car that I can't physically reach. You can do it using a film camera too, yes, but having an LCD screen that can be rotated is great. You can actually record the scouting for others to see. You can even record the rehearsals so you know exactly what to do when you replace the digital camera with the film camera. The chip adapter that I got allows me to mount C-mount lenses on the camera, but it's far from being at the right flange focal distance. That means the adapter won't let me see if I can actually focus at infinity 
or if a part focal lens is working properly. In the end, most of the experiments I make are oriented to save money on film. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Cinematography Lab.